Okay, welcome to the squid dissection. Uh, for starters, the very first step that you'll do that you didn't actually see me perform is rinsing this off. The squid are in dissecting fluid, or a preservative fluid rather, that's in the container. That needs to be rinsed off of them before we can safely dissect. So the first step is just to take them over to the sink. Make sure you rinse them off very carefully. This is why you have to wear safety glasses during the dissections. Oftentimes, that's the step where you're most likely to get something you know, sprayed in your eye or something like that is when you're rinsing things off at the sink. So just be careful. Uh, you know, take your time. Make sure you're taking your turn when it comes to rinsing it off. I will just go through some external anatomy for the squid first. Uh, the beginning portion of this, if you take a look at your squid, you'll notice sort of little dots, little brown dots on the outside of the mantle. And uh, this is the mantle, by the way, this, this sort of top portion here. And what we're seeing with that is these are pores that are responsible for the color change effect that squids have. They use this for camouflage, they use it for attracting mates. Uh, it has many different purposes, but that's what you're seeing with those little sort of dots on the outside of them. They can change colors due to that. Um, now their name cephalopods means head foot so you can see you've got the, the head portion here you'll actually do some steps with the eyes a little bit later on the eyes on each side and um, what we're looking at with the name cephalopod is that their feet and their head kind of originate from the same spots their feet of course are the little tentacles and arms and then the head portion here at the top uh, just to go through and talk about some basic anatomical terms the first thing I want to make sure you understand is the difference between the dorsal and ventral side. This is very important when it comes to initiating your dissection. We currently have the squid with the ventral side facing up. There's two easy ways to tell this. One is the siphon, which is this portion on the front. It sort of looks like a little hollow tube. The other way you can tell is that the mantle on the ventral side extends all the way up to the top of the squid. If we flip it over on the dorsal side, now, for starters, the siphon is gone. And then secondly, you can see the mantle doesn't extend all the way up to the top. It's blocked by these fins in the upper portion of the squid's anatomy. So we flip this one back over. This is referred to as the anterior side, where all of the tentacles are. And then on the back, we have the posterior side, like where the fins are on the top portion. Speaking of the appendages down here at the end, there's 10 of them all together. Many of them look very similar these sort of short, stubbier ones. These are the arms. The tentacles, there are only two of. They're a little bit longer and thinner. So as long as your guy has all of his appendages yet, you should have two long tentacles and then eight short arms, giving you 10 appendages all together on that end of the squid. Uh, if you open them up a little bit, the mouth and the beak are on the inside. The beak is kind of dark. The mouth is used in order for them to push food in there while they're eating. Uh, we'll actually go through and dissect some of that in a minute. So to, uh, to start off, the first step you have to perform is the removal of all of their appendages. That's going to allow us to get into the mouth a little bit more easily. One of the early steps you have to do during the dissection is actually removal of the beak, which is something we'll look at a little bit more closely. The tool to use for this are your large dissecting scissors and all we're going to do is cut off the tentacles basically where they meet up with the rest of the head. Uh, you want to make sure that you keep your fingers well away from this because these scissors are quite sharp and the uh, simple thing to do is just sort of remove the extra arms and tentacles and pull them off to the side once you're finished. A suggestion, when you're finished with your tools, if you just leave them in the uh, dissecting tray, that'll be helpful so that way we don't get the desk quite as messy. But if you're uh, looking down the front now, the mouth and the beak are in there in the center. And now that we've removed the arms and tentacles from the, around the outside of it, you can see this a little bit more easily. Uh, the step that's going to allow you to get these out actually involves your tweezers. Uh, what you'll do with the tweezers is insert them at the base of the beak and actually pull the beak out then 
through the end of the squid's mouth. I'll show you this as an example. Uh, it's easy if you have some smaller, thinner tweezers. Each kit should have one like this, and then a second set that's a little bit thicker and fatter. Uh, the suggested one for this is the smaller, thinner set. If you have a curved set in yours, which a few of them do, uh, those are very helpful as well. What you'll do here is insert the tweezers sort of next to that, it's called the buccal mass in the middle, um, next to this area that has the beak. It's right in the center of all the tentacles and arms. And then you're just going to kind of pull back and leverage the beak out of the front of the squid. Uh, this is something where you have to pull you know, uh, and kind of be firm, yet um, not pull too hard where you, you kind of pull everything apart. Um, you can see that buccal mass now coming out the front for me. A little bit of the esophagus is trailing on the back. If you do this very carefully, you can actually get maybe about two or three inches of the esophagus out. Uh, this is their mouth. Um, so the easiest way to expose the beak is to use your small scissors. I'm going to cut away the tissue on the end. If you're having trouble holding this like I am, uh, sometimes holding things with the tweezers makes it a little bit easier, especially if they're very slippery. Then you're going to cut the tissue away from the end, which will expose the beak underneath. The best thing to do here is probably just put it down in your tray. I was trying to hold it up so you could see it a little more easily, but you'll see the effect once I've removed the tissue. Uh, the reason they call this the beak is that it looks very much like a bird's beak, which you'll see once you expose it. Uh, so you want to be careful that you're only cutting through the soft tissue on the outside of the buccal mass. You don't want to actually cut through the beak itself, which is very dark and hard on the underside here. As you start removing the tissue, you'll be able to see the beak underneath. In the effort of trying to keep this somewhat short, I'll just go that far. But um, ho hopefully my focus is <laughs> working with this and it's not completely blurry. But you can see it almost looks like a bird's beak from the front portion there. And uh, that's what you're trying to expose. So you'll actually have a paper that you're putting all of these pieces on. Once you remove that, that gets added to its assigned spot on your paper. Uh, the next thing to do is actually open up the mantle of the squid. This is where some of that anatomy we covered earlier is important. You want to make sure that the ventral side is facing you, so the side with the siphon. You then take your large dissecting scissors and you're going to insert them right above the siphon on this side of the mantle. This is the mantle here up at the top. Uh, what you want to try to do is pull up and away when you cut this because all of the important organs are just on the other side of this structure. So as long as you're pulling sort of up and back as you're cutting. We should not damage any of the organs on the other side of the mantle. I'm going to make cuts as shallow as possible. I don't know how well you can see it in the video, but I'm sort of pulling up on the mantle as I cut to make sure that I'm not hitting anything major. Now you can see some of the digestive fluids coming out there. So if you do hit a few of the organs, um, that's sometimes it's a little unavoidable. They're just on the other side of the mantle there. Okay, once you've cut all the way to the top, you want to use some of the pins from the front of the room to pin back the mantle so you can see because otherwise it has this tendency to want to always fly closed on you. So you can get the pins from the front. Generally I suggest maybe three on each side is good. 
Uh, if you angle them away from the specimen, you get a much better hold on the, uh, the tray at the base there. And these rubber trays will uh, hold things very, very tightly as long as you sort of angle the pins in and, and hold everything back. So as I said, six pins will generally do it, you know, three on each side, get a strong angle going, and they should be just fine. Uh, we'll go over just some uh, major anatomy here. Sorry about that, I had the camera battery die. Uh, just to identify some of the internal structures for you that you'll be looking at. Um, the first thing you should look at when you have the squid opened up is the siphon. We can see this from the outside. If you extend down underneath of the siphon, that actually reaches inside of the squid. This is where the squid expels all kinds of waste material from its digestive system. It's also where the squid ejects ink. Uh, speaking of ink, you can see the ink sac here. The ink sac extends down near the tip of the siphon. Uh, depending on your individual squid, you may be able to see the opening for the end of it. I'm not sure how well the camera is going to pick that up, but there is a small opening at the end of the siphon there where, or I'm sorry, at the end of the ink sac, where ink is then e ejected down into the siphon. Uh, you can also see that the ink sac has sort of stained part of the mantle up here making it dark and black. Uh, another very obvious structure that you see are the gills. There's a set of gills on one side and then a set of gills on the other side of the squid. I'm not sure again if you can see the, the far side group there. Those gills each have a heart attached to the top of them. There is a, there's actually a three-part heart structure in the squid. There are the brachial hearts that pump blood down into the gills, and there's also the systemic heart up here in the center, which is going to pump blood to the rest of the squid. Uh, if we're looking for the stomach, here's the, uh, the stomach of our squid on this side that sort of attaches into its intestines, which then run down the inside of the squid and eventually the rectum, which expels waste through the siphon. Everything that goes out of the squid uh, leaves through the siphon here. Uh, this individual is male. An easy way to tell is the female will have ovaries that are full of eggs. The male just has the testes up here at the top. And then uh, you can usually see a structure underneath of that, um, which you can see here if we sort of move the other organs out of the way. This one here is the gladius. It's also referred to as the pen. Uh, if you remember, squid are part of the phylum mollusca. This is all that's really left of that bivalve shell that we see in other species. So things like clams and oysters. This is all that's left of that shell. This is actually made out of uh, protein. This one's called chitin. And uh, that's what um, is, is basically the only remains of the, the shell that we're seeing in some of those other species. The way that you remove this is if you pull up on the rest of the organs, the gladius or the pen sort of extends down here through the bottom. If you cut very carefully at this tissue that connects the organs together, you can actually remove the pen. And uh, if you're really talented, you can then remove the ink sac and you can actually write with this, which is part of where it gets its name. Um, I guess there are some early cultures that would use this as a writing instrument. So how convenient to have an ink sac and a pen in, uh, in the same species. It almost seems as though the squid was, was built to be used for writing. Uh, if you can identify those major organ structures, that's what I'm looking for when I'm coming around. So um, as far as this video is concerned, I hope this was helpful. I hope the quality of it turns out well. I realize that it might be a little quiet with the microphone on the other side of the camera. I'm trying to speak as loudly as possible without really yelling at you. Uh, but the, uh, the main thing that I want you to do is just make sure you understand the general squid anatomy, enough so to follow your dissection guide tomorrow and to be able to identify all the major structures that we talked about. Take a minute to answer the questions that are linked at the end of this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the squid dissection. Have a good night.